Hello, welcome to Beach View, our podcast where we talk about things and stuff and all kinds of cool things that we're getting into this week. <laughs> so, yeah, we're doing another YouTube video, this time only one. One longer one, yes. Yes. So, uh, it's called Mario Kart 64, The Quest for World Record Perfection, and this video is by the channel Summoning Salt. They do videos of this sort, just like speed run world record histories and i wanted to do this because a new one came out recently and i was watching it and i was like you know i think one of these videos would be a good podcast topic and you know also we did youtube videos recently fits in with that we did a documentary recently and i think this counts as a documentary so yeah i think so you know it all fit together and i chose this specific video because I think it had the best story of all the uh, summoning salt videos. So Oh, it was a pretty good story. But I wanted to say first that when you told me it was about speed running, I thought you meant like athletic speed running, <laughs> like running. Like So I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I like sports. I like watching sports stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and then when I watched it, I was like, oh, a different kind of speed running. So do you want to like, yeah so you know explain a little bit okay <laughs> yeah i was gonna give some background i've actually talked about it a bit on the podcast before but um speed running is playing a game and trying to finish it as fast as possible <laughs> yeah. it's this whole like activity that's rather popular on the internet especially like starting in the 2010s started really blowing up I and mean, it's got this whole community surrounding it where people compete to be the fastest in certain games or like categories in games and try to get the world record, and there's a bunch of people that like to watch it, either, you know, the videos of uh, world records and stuff, or a lot of people stream it, and that's rather popular to watch, like, people doing it live. Yeah, uh, so I know we talked about it before, and but I don't know why, for some reason, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> speedrunning. Like, I just, th that's not the first thing that my mind goes to. But, like, once I saw the video, I was like, oh, okay, I remember us talking about this. This is what speedrunning is. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little confusion at first, but I got it. Although, I will say, this does feel like a sports documentary. Like, yes. Like, this story definitely feels like the kind of story you could get from sports, so. Yeah, I think so. It's like, this is the real story of, you know, <laughs> kind of like that vibe. And yeah. It's like, what? What really happened in this, like, tough competition, you know? So, it did It did follow along those lines. Yeah, and um, Mario Kart 64 is a game where you play as Mario, the famous running and jumping lad from the Super Mario series, and his friends, and you do kart racing, and it's 64 because the game came out on the Nintendo 64. Yeah, so I, isn't that, like, an older console now, yes. but, like, people still use it? Yeah, well, especially if they're doing speedruns. That's, oh. like, actually rather common for people to, like, have an older game they like to speedrun. Oh, okay. Like, um, some of the most popular games to speedrun, I think, still are from the Nintendo 64, so. Really? Because I remember Nintendo 64 from when I was younger, like, being a big thing. So I was like, are they still, you know, running on this old console? But that makes yep. sense. And racing games in particular fit really well with speedrunning. Like, most racing games even have a specific mode where you're timed and trying to finish a lap or race as fast as possible. But, you know, they're kind of a good fit for this, given the territory of, you know, trying to finish something as fast as possible. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, I wanted to ask you, like, do you play this game? No, I've never played this game. I have played others in the series, though. Oh. I've played this game before when I was younger, and oh, okay. yeah, it was um, it was fun, but I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't play it that often, though, so I didn't have a chance to, you know, build up to the world record. No, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bummer for me. <laughs> so that background out of the way, this video in particular is about Mario Kart 64. And in Mario Kart 64, there are 16 tracks, and players try to beat them as fast as possible. That's speed running. But there are two categories for these 16 tracks, one lap and three lap. And this makes for a total of 32 records. And the focus of this video is a German speedrunner named Matthias Rustemeyer, 
who was so good that he started taking the majority of the records and was poised to get all 32. But as he got closer to his goal, the other runners formed an alliance to stop him. So this is a video about that story of Matthias trying to get all the world records and the other players trying to stop him. Well, I'm glad you explained the 32 records because they may have said that in the video, but I might have just glossed oh, over it. they did. <laughs> okay, because I was going like um, halfway through, I was like, wait, I thought it was 16. Like, I, I didn't really get <laughs> like where the 32 came from. So I'm sure I just like, because I had started the video at one point and then finished it at a different point. Oh, I'm sure okay, I just forgot yeah. that they said it. But um, thank you for explaining that, because I was a little confused about that. <laughs> they did say it, and um, yeah, so you do one lap in three laps, and like three laps is, I believe, a full race. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you use different strategies for one lap and three laps, so that's why they're separated, you know, to both try to be as fast as possible on one lap and to be as fast as possible on the whole race for the course, so. I gotcha, I gotcha. So yeah, what'd you think of this video? I liked it, and even though like I'm not really super into gaming, I thought it was kind of cool because just the, like the competition, like I love that kind of stuff, and it was definitely an interesting competition because, you, like you said, um, Mateus would have this world record, or like he kind of came out of nowhere and like beat all these records, and he started like building up like more and more records, and then these other um, players decided to like form their alliance and they're like well and I should say Mateus like came out up front and said I'm gonna do th I'm, I'm going for 32 out of 32 like I'm, I'm gonna beat this I'm gonna be the world record holder of all of these records yeah and so this little alliance formed where they're like we're gonna stop him from doing that and it was all friendly like friendly competition it wasn't like you know any kind of like ill will or like being rude or unsportsmanlike conduct it was like fun competition to me that's what it sounded like yeah yeah and that's how like the video presented it and so it was kind of cool because as soon as like Mateus would get like super far that like this alliance would like swoop in and like take some of his records so I liked it because it was like over the course of several years so it, it was like you know, he would try to win this record. People would take it away from him. He would take some time off or like, I think they said, was it the summer or he only played yeah. in the summer or something about the summer. <laughs> and um, and then, so that would give other people time to win the records back. And then he would try to go defend his title and win more records back. So it was this constant like cycle and he would get so close, like so many times, you know? Yeah. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I think this story is just, like, really incredible. I mean, like, as a sports story, as I was mentioning, but, like, in general, it's just, like, to have someone so dominant at this competition and to get so close to trying to, like, reach his goal and to get all 32 of the records, you know, to be the best, to hold all the world records, and, like, just being stopped at every turn. And, like, the, the back and forth of, like, he'll be trying to get you know, the one or two records he really needs that are, like, really difficult. And then um, one of the uh, Alliance will come in and just, like, take one of his other records off of him. So he'll have <laughs> yeah. to go back and get that record back and then proceed back to working on the uh, other records he was trying to get. It was, like, a constant fight. So it yeah. was a constant. He would get so far, and several times he got 31 out of 32. And he had this one... I don't know, I guess you'd say course, this one course that um, he needed to beat. And that was like, you know, the hardest one for him. And he would get so close. And then other people, like you're saying, would come and take his other records. So he would maybe at like 31 out of 32. And then he would fall back to like 27 out of 32 or 24 out of 32. And he kept like just constantly struggling to win his records back, and then also they had that one last one. Was it the Moo Moo Farm or something? <laughs> yeah, something what like that. What was it that. called? I think that's what it was called. Yeah, something like the Moo Moo Farm. And that was the one like he really needed to beat. And then I think eventually he beat it, right? And then Yes, but then um, there was another course that he needed to get. Yes. 
Exactly. So it was like when he finally got that one that was evading him, like somebody else took these other ones. So it was like a constant, constant struggle to get those to get up to 32. And that was just kind of cool because it was like he's so close. Like as you're watching this video, you're like, he's so close. Like he's going to get it. And then like the A1 Alliance would like swoop in and like take something from him. And then at one point there was like a new player that came out of nowhere that started beating his records and um and it what was very telling is that he had way more records than anybody ever had so he was like a superstar in this arena like other people had like six records four records you know it was much lower than what he had but the cool thing is even though the people in this alliance had so many fewer records they still would come and like beat this one course, like, take his record away from him. So he was constantly struggling to win it back, you know? I thought that was just a fun competition all around. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's especially, like, I think, interesting how close he came mm -hmm. to it. Like, there were multiple times after he'd gotten uh, Moo Moo Farms or whatever it's called. Yeah. He ended up, uh, the other course he needed to get that got taken from him was Donkey Kong Jungle or something like that. And he kept trying to go for that one, and he, like, twice uh, ended up, like, just shy of it. Like, in one instance, he just missed, like, a trick he needed to get by, like, a hair, yeah. like, literally a few pixels. And if he had gotten it, he would have gotten the record. And then a second time, uh, he did beat the record. But the day before, someone else had, uh, like, the person who held the current record had beat their own record, so <laughs> if he had gotten it just one day before, he would have had the record, but then the record like was... Like, 24 uh, hours, yeah. Yeah, so, like, he would have, for just a short period of time, had the 32 out of 32, but he got stopped from getting it. So it was always, like, this last second thing, too, like, it's like, you really thought he was gonna get it, and then, like, at the last minute, somebody would take it. And it was just really funny because, you know, like he had to be like so close, but probably in the back of his head, like he knew somebody was going to take it, you know, and like yeah. constant struggle to be the best. And so another part of this that I thought um, was interesting that I had no idea about is that there's two different like versions of. Yes. Uh, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So that's related to uh, TV stuff. Um Okay. Televisions have a different, like, I don't know the specifics from a technological standpoint, but um, in different parts of the world, there's different, like, television stuffs. <laughs> you can tell I'm not technical because I'm saying stuff. <laughs> but uh, the yeah. main, like, the major two are NTSC and PAL. NTSC is what's used in Japan and North America. I think all of North America. I'm not sure about that, though. And PALs used for most of the rest of the world. And the difference between them is that um, NTSC is at default 30 frames per second. And PAL is 25 frames per second. So uh, this presents an issue when games come up. Because in like stuff like movies and TV you might be able to tell. But probably not. Mm -hmm. But with games you know there's a lot of like different uh, speed related things that come up. And that means a lot of PAL games end up running ever so slightly slower than NTSC games. And that's the case in this. So the community had to come up with a place like, oh, well, if they're on different versions of the game, uh, we need to, like, normalize this out and just, like, have a combined leaderboard so it's not, like, you know, splitting the competition in half based on, like, what country they're from, you know, so we can right. compare the two. So they did a whole leaderboard with equivalent times so yes. if you played in in this version or if you played in pals like you would have an equivalent so that everything was a level playing field which i thought was kind of cool and i think it just speaks to and i, I guess it's with any speed running games that the, the community wants it all to be fair across the yeah. board so that when you win something you're actually winning you're not you know you're not saying you won on this version but not the other one yeah, but I just thought that was kind of cool because they, it, you know, I had no idea. It was like, there's all these like, you know, little details that me not being a part of the gaming world, like I have no idea about. 
So I was like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. Like, I didn't know that. And I didn't know it had to do with the TVs. I just yeah. thought it was, like, I, I understood different places in the world had different things, but I didn't know why. So that makes more sense, too, now. <laughs> but that was kind of neat. So they had all these leaderboards, and they accounted for, like, you know, all kinds of different things that would make everything level. And the thing that I really liked was that there's a whole community around, like, gaming, and, and I guess in particular games have different communities. And that's just kind of cool because it's like a, it's like the social aspect to it and the way that um, I think gamers like respect each other and they, you know, had this friendly competition and hopefully it was friendly for <laughs> everyone, um, <laughs> but it was just kind of neat because um, Mateus had to like really fight to keep his record or to, to gain his records back and he had to really fight on his quest to get 32 out of 32. And all along the way, you know, as we're saying, people would swoop in and take it from him. But it was all good. Like, you know, he would congratulate the other people. The other people would congratulate him. So it seemed like it was all like, you know, just friendly and like a fun thing that would drive each other to like better times, you know? Yeah. And speed running is generally like this. Like, usually speed running is pretty like amicable. They're not... <laughs> really out for each other's throats <laughs> that's good yeah so do you have well you said you didn't play this game so you don't really have experience in this no. game but do you have similar experiences or do you do speed running at all yeah i've speed run a few times before but not much yeah i bet it's fun <laughs> yeah it takes a lot of dedication especially if you're this good at it yes. because in order to like get these records you have to like you know, play these courses, like, hundreds of times, you know, to, to get good enough at practicing or to, like, be able to... Because you're gonna mess up some of the time, right? You can't be perfect every time, so you have to keep going until you do it perfectly, especially the as the competition gets more and more intense, like, and the records get lower and lower, there's, like, a theoretical minimum time that can be achieved, you know, and, it, like, eventually people will get to the point where they're hitting that. Yeah, but you're right. It sounded like from the video that these people are spending thousands of hours, like, getting these records. It's not just, like, they're that good. It's that they keep practicing and practicing and learning the exact moves, like, the exact place they need to turn or jump over a river or whatever. And that brings me to my next point, that there was a difference um, in the video. They said there was a difference between, like, running the course in full or running the course with shortcuts so apparently like some of the courses they had these shortcuts that you could take so like jumping over a river for instance instead of going around it and they um differentiated that time so like if you had a record with shortcuts or without shortcuts yes um uh, but i wasn't clear was Mateus like did he was he without shortcuts yes this uh okay. This whole video uh, and these records are all focused on the no shortcut runs. Gotcha. Yes. And he specifically wanted to get all the no shortcut records. Which is pretty cool, which takes even more, you know, more skill to not cut those corners. Well, and... some of those shortcuts are, like, very technically, like, involved. Some of them require, uh, like, frame-perfect jumps. Which, a uh, bit of jargon, but frame perfect in speedrunning is um, when you have to, like, hit a particular button or set of buttons on a specific frame. Like, you have one frame to do it. And these games are usually running at, like, 30 frames per second as a minimum. So you're, like, you have to hit in fractions of a second in order to get these tricks. It sounds so hard. Like, it sounds <laughs> yeah. impossible. It's very difficult. I think it's cool, though. Like... Yeah, just, but, like, as I said, I've played this game before, like, when I was little, and I just, I think it's, like, uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not good at these kinds of games, so I just think it's amazing when people set these world records, you know? Yeah, it's definitely impressive to see, and, and that's one of the uh, joys of speedrunning for a lot of people, is that, like, you can watch a game you played, or played when you were younger, and see people who are just, like, incredibly good at it and that's neat to see sometimes yeah and the other part of it is so like in this video they talked about like um how people stream their 
I guess their courses or their games that they're playing. Yeah. And they put it on like YouTube or I guess that's um you know, do they do that on Twitch too? Yes. Those are the two big streaming platforms. Yes. So they show like the actual like um I guess the screen that they're playing it from and then there's also like their reaction like there's a I guess a camera on them too right so you yeah, can see them the playing time. but also the screen so do you ever do that <laughs> I've streamed before but I've never done it with a camera yeah mostly because I don't have a camera well I guess I could hook up my phone but like uh, I'm not bothered with doing all that <laughs> yeah I don't blame you so another interesting thing so I think this um, video, I, I want to say maybe started, like, did they say, like, 2013, and it went to 2018? Uh, it went all the way up to, like, when the video was present. Mm -hmm. uh, so this video came out in October of 2020. Oh, okay. I don't remember when it specifically, like, when Mateus specifically started playing. Got you. Okay. But, like, they also cover stuff from the 90s uh in the like briefly in the introduction to the video because this game has been like out since the 90s and people have been speed running it since the 90s so yeah but like for mateus's like streak i think like i want to say he started in 2013 something like that yeah something close yeah and so another interesting thing is i read a couple of the comments like on the youtube video and one of it okay so the person who made the video had a comment like pinned to the top that was like for all of you who are saying that you know the community was basically like being hostile and being like jerks for stopping Mateus from taking his 32 out of 32 every single time he's like no no it wasn't like that like this is it's all in the spirit of competition you know there's um sportsman like conduct that everybody follows and you know, like all this kind of other stuff like it was all on the up and up and it was all good like and and plus like why wouldn't Mateus want the community coming after him because by having to defend his titles like he's basically like you know being pushed to do um to be better and if you won 32 out of 32 without them like competing it wouldn't mean as much than if you won it legitimately you know so his whole comment was just based on, like, a lot of people in the comments were saying, like, oh, they're such jerks. Like, why don't you just let them get it? And they're like, no, that's not how sports is. Not yeah. that this is, like, a sport, but you know what I mean. That's not how the spirit of competition is. If you're going to win the 32 out of 32, it needs to be with that stiff competition, right? Right. Because otherwise it has no meaning. So I thought that was, um, you know, a nice little comment to put on there like to just to explain like it's not that they were being jerks they just you know it means more if he won 32 out of 32 legitimately right because like part of the point of doing this to get all the records i think at least is that you're proving that you're the best there is at doing this right like if you have all the records you're the best in the world at this game in this particular category and if there's no competition for that, like, if they're looking, the other competitors are looking at that and saying, okay, well, we give up, then, like, you know, that's not quite the same, like. No, it's not, and I, I enjoyed, like, every time he got really close, like, he would, and sometimes he would lose a lot of records and have to come back after he took some time off. He would come back, have to win those records back, and then try for that last one, you know, so it was, it was a constant struggle for him. And then I think it was him, Mateus, who also commented on the thing that said, like, oh, this is an awesome video, you know, thank you for putting this out. And then it, he said something like, and I think he said something like in 2020, or it might have been 2021, but in 2020, um, they, uh, what did he say? It was something to the effect of, like, Although he did lo end up losing respect for one particular member of the alliance, like for the most part, like it was all good. So I was like, well, what happened? Yes. <laughs> like, how did he lose yeah, respect? So I, I was going <laughs> to yes. yeah, well, get I'll into let that. You, <laughs> I'll let you get into that because I, I read some more because that made me want to read more comments. I was just like, let me see what this is, you know. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. 
Right, so um, there, you know, this video came out, like I said, in October of 2020, and uh, time keeps progressing yes. <laughs> after videos are released, and the story continued. So last year, uh, 2021, 32 out of 32 records was achieved, but it wasn't done by Mateus. Right. Someone else did that. Um, I forget the guy's name, but it's Dan. one of the competitors mentioned in the video. I think his name is Dan. Okay. And the way he did it was actually controversial. Mm hmm So, <laughs> that's what he was talking about. But, um, the usual thing with speedrunning records is that they're all uploaded as soon as you get them. Because either they're live-streamed, which is very common, and in that case, like, you basically automatically know a new record. Because they just did it live. Everybody can see it. But if they are being recorded and not done live, they're usually uploaded, like, right after. And that was the norm for this community, that, like, if you got a record, you, you know, you showed everybody, you told everybody about it. Uh, however, instead of doing that, this guy would beat a track's record and just sit on it. And he started doing this for several of the records, so he was effectively hoarding all these records. Yeah. And eventually uploaded them all at once, and I think it was, like, 15 of them by the time he, like, finished doing this. Right, which is, like... You don't do that. So as I was reading more, and not like I even know like what this community is all about, but as I was reading more um, of the comments, they're like, yeah, like, just so y'all know, like, that's very much frowned upon. Like, you don't do that because it doesn't allow the competition. Right. So essentially, you're holding on to all these records, posting them all at once, which I didn't know you could do. Like, I thought it was like an automatic, like, I'm thinking like, you know how they have those like, um, like Pac-Man and stuff, like yeah. games where you you play them and it automatically shows your record and you just put like your initials in or whatever. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what it was and it was like an automatic no. posting, but I guess that's not how it works. Right. Some games, uh, especially newer games, like after the internet became more widespread and online got put into everything, uh, would will do that and like have specific leaderboards built into the game mm -hmm. but um for something like this you have to go in and do it yourself this is like a community driven thing separate from the game you know this game came out before internet connectivity was in game consoles so it's not automatic and you usually like i said you know you would show them as soon as you got them yeah but instead you know this guy hoarded them and you can tell that this was an effective strategy because, you know, from the video you can see, like, what would happen is, uh, you know, he would get a new record and then players would, like, uh, like, try to get it. Or if they did get it, you know, he would have to go back and beat him. But if you hoard him like this, you know, he doesn't know that he has to improve his record. Right. And Mateus could have definitely had his 32 out of 32 had he done the same thing. I mean, right, he could have yeah. done that years earlier. He could have hoarded all of his records and then posted them all at once. Mm -hmm. And he would have been the 32 out of 32 world record holder. But he didn't do that. Right. Because that's not how you, like, you know, that's not what you do in friendly competition. No. You don't and, give the <laughs> other players a chance, right? Yeah, and it's funny because when I watched this video, this was before all of this had come out. Um, and some people were actually suggesting in the comments that he should have done that, that he should have hoarded them and then <laughs> uploaded them all at once. And there were, like, arguments back and forth about, you know, how that's unsportsmanlike and whatnot. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like, you just don't do that. But I'm surprised that a member of the original alliance, like, was the one to do that. I mean, I, I don't know these people, obviously, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, what? I thought the whole point was, like, just friendly competition, and then you go and do something like that that's, like, frowned upon. Like, yep. it's not technically against the rules, but it's not really fair either. Yeah. And so, um, I just don't understand that. And then the other thing that I had questioned was, like, okay, so if you're publishing your records yourself, like, do you also have to publish proof that you got them? Like, do you have to show, like, the streaming or whatever? Like, yeah. how does that work? So, that is the case in... For the majority of games now, because, like, uh, you know, you don't want people to just claim they got something and didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, it was a bit different just because, like, recording was a lot harder to do. Yeah. And especially recording and putting it on the internet was even harder. So there were, like, 
some cases uh, where people would just like say, oh, I got this record and uh, people would take their word for it, you know, especially if they didn't have a history of lying about this and that. But uh, in the majority of games now, you need to either like be streaming it or have recorded it in order for it to count. Yeah, I mean, that only makes sense because anybody can say, you know, they won all these things. Yeah. I mean, not that you would, <laughs> I don't know that that's really prevalent, but it's kind of like, I mean, really, I could get on there and be like, I won 32 out of 32. Right, yeah. Now someone will tell you, where's your proof? Right, exactly, yeah. But I just couldn't believe that when I was reading through the comments. I was like, oh, the plot thickens. Like, I cannot believe that they did that. So it sounds like Mateus has just, like, retired from the game. Like, what's right. the what's the next thing for him? So... Like I said, the, this guy ends up getting 32 out of 32, and this was controversial, you know, the community and outside observers thought it was a bad move, and Mateus himself said he felt betrayed and actually retired, briefly, uh, oh, <laughs> he has <briefly>. since <laughs> unretired and started speedrunning again. The same game? Like, the same thing? Yes, and he's actually reclaimed some of his records, like, when I was look, because I had heard this story before, you know, last year when it happened, mm -hmm. and then I was like, you know, I better go check, reread the story just in case. And then yeah. I was looking, and it was like, oh yeah, he's since uh, gotten back into it. No, so what does he stand at now? Do you know? I think it was like ten or eleven, but I'm not positive. Oh, so he's got to work his way up. Yeah, I mean, and who knows if he'll uh, get it at this point. I mean, I feel like he has to. Like, you came that close. <laughs> like, like, I would be like, okay, on one hand, you have to reevaluate your life and be like, do I want to spend thousands of hours doing this to try to get this world record? And on the other hand, you're like, you came that close so many times. You know, why not try again? Yeah. Why not be a lifelong quest to get to 32 <laughs> out of 32? And don't stop until you do. And then you retire. Right. Well, at some point, there are like two things that make this, uh, like have a time limit on it. One is age, you know. Yeah. The same thing happens with athletes. But at some point, you get to a point where you just aren't as good as you used to be. Right, right. I mean, I don't know how old he is and how much time he has left, but... Reflex is slow as you age, yes. right? <laughs> and just, like, you know, you can get stuff like injuries, especially, like, repetitive stress injuries that can cause yes. issues. You know, it, it's typical, syndrome. yeah, athlete stuff just for <laughs> speed running. Yeah, different kind of sport, yeah. And on top of that, for games like this, like at some point when you're speedrunning, you will hit a hard limit on, like maybe not exactly, but you'll get pretty damn close to where it is impossible to go any faster than this, where like theoretical limit has been achieved. Yeah. What I think is really cool though, that you have people who are that good, that they're setting world records. Um, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of cool. And you're right when you said that this is, it was kind of like a sports documentary. And it's like, you know, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat <laughs> that comes with like losing your world records. And, um, but I think it sounds like Mateus has a lot of respect for the other players mm -hmm. and most of the other players do for him as well. And I don't know, it all just reminded me of like a total like sports competition. And like you said, it's just like, it's kind of a different kind of sport, you know? So I just thought that was kind of, it was a fun video. It was just yeah. like, I didn't think I would be that interested in it, <laughs> but I was, but like it made it, you know, and uh, they even said, I think um, in the video, they showed like a comment earlier on that one of the, like when they formed the Alliance, one of the team members was like, I guess it's just like human nature to try to go after this, you know, competition or something to that effect. And, um, and I think that with anything, like, human nature is to try to drive competition. Like, <laughs> we're a very competitive species, right? So if there's a record to be won, like, people want to go for it. And then people want to try to take it away from that person and, and do their best. So I thought that that kind of made it more like a sports yeah. documentary to me as well. Well, because I could see this exact same story happening with like track and field events oh, yeah. or like auto racing. Yeah, that's exactly you know? what I was thinking of. Yeah, I was thinking of track and field. Like 
when you win a record and then somebody else wins and then you go defend your record, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and the very funny thing is, so um, in the video, they, um, which I finished watching this morning, they kept talking about um, time trials. And um, the funny thing is that Travis, my husband, is doing a time trial this morning, uh, like on a bicycle, <laughs> like he's doing a race. And I just thought that was kind of funny because it was like, you know, he's doing a time trial and they're doing a time trial. Yeah. Do so, you think he'll all get all the 32 runs. records? I don't know if he will, but, you know, <laughs> he's going to. He did um, win state champion before. Um, so we'll see in his category. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I could see this same thing happening with like, like you said, cycling or track and field or something where someone is so dominant that they're poised to get like all the uh, records in a certain category of sport or something. Yeah. And then other people trying to, like, stop them from doing that. Right. But like you said, you can't be at your best all the time, and there are limits to what we can physically do. So there's always going to be somebody, like, waiting in the wings to take that. So I thought that was just kind of a, um, a cool, you know, I think it's, like, why I love the Olympics so much. <laughs> Even though I'm not athletic myself, I just love watching the competition. So this to me was kind of like that. So I was actually pleasantly surprised because, like I said, when I first started, I thought it was going to be a sports thing. And then when I <laughs> saw that it was Mario Kart, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be like as cool as I thought it was going to be. But then once they got into it, you know, you find yourself like cheering for Mateus. <laughs> but then also like cheering for the Alliance, like, no, don't let yeah. him get it, like, get it, you know, so. Even though all this happened, like, past tense, like, it was yeah. all new to me, so <laughs> it was just kind of a funny, funny thing. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, a really well-made video. It's, like, well-written, well-put-together, and I think, like, the story's really good, you know, like I said from the top. I think that, like, regardless of whether you're into, like, sports or speedrunning or video games, it's a really, like, interesting human story to uh, watch. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And it explores the limits of, you know, what we're capable of doing. And, but this time it's just in gaming. And I think you're right. Like the music, um, like the soundtrack of the video, the commentary of the video, you know, the streaming that they, they put in there where you could see like the players reactions when they win a world record. They did a really good job with this. So, um, uh, you know, props to them. Yeah. And you said this; these people do, um, like, gaming videos regularly? Yeah, they do speedrunning videos regularly, and they're all these sort of um, world record histories. Uh, a lot of them are just, like, basic, here's the, like, history of it, but sometimes you find these sorts of stories in it, and they're really fascinating. Yeah, that's so fun! And it makes me want to go dig out in, in 64 and get my Mario Kart on. I'm just <laughs> kidding, I'm not that good at it. <laughs> Not that great at yeah, it. Though I will say, if you did like this video, uh, you could check out some of Summoning Salt's other videos, which I think are also pretty good. Yeah, I mean, as long as they have some healthy competition in there, <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, though, because looking at the graphics, um, you're like, oh, that is an old game. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of cool that they're still using that. Yeah, like all, I mean... All the Mario Karts, though, have, like, a speedrunning community, and they have some pretty, like, wild, like, happenings. Uh, some of the, like, especially we talked about uh, the, like, skips versus skip list. Mm -hmm. Some of the skips uh, in these games and in Mario Kart 64, too, are just, like, ridiculous, where you can, like, if you hit something right, you can skip basically the entire race. Like, one of the maps on, uh, uh, Summoning Salt actually did a video about this, but one of the maps in Mario Kart 64, there's a skip that lets you complete a lap in, like, under 10 seconds <laughs> because you just, like, run into a wall it puts you behind the finish line and yeah. you trick the game into thinking that you've actually completed a lap so you, like, go through the finish line and it counts. That's so cool. Um, I saw, and I don't think this is a skip, but on one of the courses that they were doing, like, you had to time it just right to, like, slide under a train yeah that was coming you know in the first lap and if you don't time it just right like you have to wait till the second one or something like that and um i was like how do you like get that good where you're timing it exactly right 
And then also, how are you finding the skips? Like, is it by accident? Somebody finds them and then you read about it or watch it, you know? And then you try it yourself. I'm just going like, this is kind of (laughs) cool. Yeah. And that's the thing in speedrunning in general. If there's any game that has, like, sort of uh, glitches or weird tricks that you can do to, like, skip large portions of the game. And those are usually found, like, a lot of times by accident. But sometimes, like, you know, people purposely try to find stuff like this. Yeah. Like, try to find places that let them skip massive portions of the game. Or sometimes even small portions. Like, you'll... Especially as a run progresses, like, you'll see people trying to save, like, a second yeah. <laughs> over their previous time. But it's just, like, it gets that tight. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I mean, I guess whatever works for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, do you have anything else to add? Uh, Just that a uh, major speed running event games done quick is coming up at the end of this month so oh i will be watching some of that well i'll need your commentary on it you gotta keep <laughs> me updated who's winning <laughs> well that's not how it works but i've talked about gdq before on the podcast yes but it's it's a really interesting event uh it's you get a bunch of like speed runners together they submit a game that they're going to run and then they'll they have a committee that chooses and it's just a bunch of different runners running a bunch of different games and it, they raise money for charity yeah and in the summer they raise money for doctors without borders very cool i think that's awesome also this is episode 50 of our podcast <gasps> i believe what? i had no idea yes it is so <gasps> yeah happy 50th episode Happy 50th anniversary! <laughs> That's not what that is. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't work that way. No. <laughs> well, congratulations to us. <laughs> yes. Well, I, uh, I guess we don't have anything else. No, I think we're good. All right. Well, that has been uh, an episode of The Beach View. We hope you enjoyed listening. And tune in next time. For more stuff and or things. Bye. Bye.